Sounds good. Hi there, everybody. Welcome to Trans in the Am Friendly Fridays. Today I have with me Boba Bish. How you doing today? I am uh, a little drained, feeling yeah. a little shut in. Sure. But, you know, Understandable. It is what it is in these crazy COVID days. Absolutely. I tell you, COVID has been one thing or another for us. Oh, I know. It's been awful. Like, a few days ago, we found out my roommate might possibly have it. And then, like, Ooh. today, I found out two of my coworkers have it. So, ah. guess who's staying inside for the next, like, 14 <laughs> days? <laughs> that girl right there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right no, I, I feel that. Well, good for you, staying inside and not... Not exposing yourself to any of that nonsense. That's yeah, good. That's I, good. Um, I I can't stand it. I you know it's awful. Ah, we could have been done with it by now. You know, we we know, we could have all been done with it by now. It could have all been over. Yeah, if people would have just stayed their happy little butts in their rooms, in their houses, not went anywhere. All they had to do, all they literally all they had to do, just sign up for the free trial of Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah. It's an MMORPG. It's fantastic. That's all they had to do. Or they could have just gotten a free trial subscription to like a streaming service and like right, just yeah. sat there and watched something. Like, Gosh. It's so <sighs> hard, people. It's really not. Which, by the way, I like your hat a lot. That's oh, really thanks. cute. It's a Dawn hat, right? Yeah, it is. Oh, so cute. I've had oh this God. for like four years, five years. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's very cute on yeah. you. Thanks. So if you want to go ahead and get started, um, we can talk a little bit about um, your experience being a trans person, uh, what that means to you, and kind of like uh, how things have went. Sure. Um, I don't really even know like where to begin this conversation because like being trans is like its whole ass experience and it's so hard to like put it into words. I'm sure you, like, get what I mean when I say that. It's, like, oh, yeah. while, like, I feel like it's this beautiful thing of, like, kind of, like, a a, a worm pole turning into a butterfly. it's also, like, this, like, horrible thing that I wouldn't ri wish on, like, my worst enemy because of some of the things that we go through as trans folks. Mm -hmm. And it's, like... It's, it's just this whole ordeal. I have been transitioning for four years now. Um, and every year I feel like it's either like a re I had a really good year as a trans person this year. Or, or it was like, oh, damn. People did not like me because I was trans this year, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a whole ordeal. It's it's really is like a one in a kind kind of feeling mm -hmm. absolutely i agree um it is pretty unique there's not um an experience that i can say that i've had in my coming up on 32 years of life that i can relate besides you know it's it stands out absolutely does yeah um uh <laughs> i don't even like when I go to like talk about what being trans means to me, I also I often I often get dumbstruck mm -hmm. and like don't know even where to begin with organizing the words that go into it because it means like so many different things. It means um there's euphoria to it, there's like a lifelong reckoning of finally having the thing i wanted when i was a kid and getting made fun of in school because i wore all these tight pants and tight shirts and mm -hmm. had my hair really long and colored and but there's also this like damn sometimes life could maybe have been easier if i hadn't made that leap but it's like i don't think i would change that yeah you know I, that leap is definitely worth it absolutely i 100 percent agree um yeah, yeah. I think there's things that I don't like about being trans. <clears throat> yeah. I think there are there are things about like the way that I'm treated by other people specifically. Um mm -hmm. or just like hearing the like really kind of gross jokes, you know, that people oh, tell. Yeah. Um Oh yeah. Every Ace Ventura movie knows exactly what you mean. <sighs> yeah. 
Yeah. Well, um, when did you, you said you've been on hormones for about four years is, is yeah, how long um, you've been transitioning? Yeah. Um, four years. Um, I came out, I think two, three months before I started my hormone replacement therapy, which would have been in November of it's 2022 now. So what? 2017. Mm hmm something like that yeah it's been a it's been a long journey yeah i know four years doesn't seem like a lot of time to some people but it really is when you're like experiencing this like second puberty and like second mm -hmm. coming of figuring out who in the fuck you actually are yeah you know absolutely i think um it's it, it can also be really hard um to do that if it's mm -hmm. if it's been um a long time since your last puberty yeah <laughs> um oh, yeah. for me it was and like i find myself uh struggling like the the adolescent in me and the adult in me are constantly waging war against each other because it's the adolescent in me just wants to feel vindicated and wants to get out get out her emotions and yes. the, the adult in me wants oh to God, yes. just say well you're being unreasonable and you know you need to pull it back and you manage your emotions a little bit better and stuff like that and it's yeah no i totally i totally totally get that yeah it's like it's like in not a bad way so to say it's like going to war with yourself a little because there's like these two contradicting sides of being like oh i'm not a teenager anymore but at the same time on the inside i kind of feel like a teenager because there's all <laughs> these new hormones rushing through my body like what do i do <laughs> right yeah it can be hard um it can be really hard um in your experience when you were going through um you know starting your transition do you see any differences in your growth, um, like mentally from the first couple months? Um, any differences there with like the the way that you feel emotions or the the way that you process things? Oh yeah, like one one hundred percent. So when I first came out, I got like before transition, I was very outgoing and not a shy person, like at all. And then when I started hormones and transitioning, going to like regular therapy, I started getting really shy and closed in because I was like emotional and scared, like, mm -hmm. like, especially living in North Carolina, like it's hard out here for a trans girl, yeah. let alone a new trans girl who doesn't know how to deal with like these new emotions yet and i think now that i'm a few years in like i'm starting to slowly regain like my outwardness and learning mm -hmm. how to like actually go through these emotions in like a healthy way and not just like bottle everything into like this one little titty skittle bottle Kitty Skittle bottle. Yeah. Like I used to. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. It can be hard. Um for me sometimes I worry about, you know, the way that I express emotions might be might be detrimental to how I want to be perceived from other people, you know. Mm -hmm. So it can be hard. Me I'm still kind of getting my uh get my land legs there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I one hundred percent get that. Well, have you faced any um adversary or any uh obstacles there as far as your transition goes um i like yes and no like transition while it has been hard has also been like not as hard for me as it has been for some girls and guys that i know who have transitioned mm -hmm. um for the most part most of my family is accepting but it's taken four years to get some of them to start calling me the correct pronouns and like addressing me by my correct name and so like i feel like i am slightly lucky in comparison to some 
trans folks who end up like completely losing some of their family because of who they are and while i like while i do want to say yes my transition has been hard i am on the luckier side of transition where it hasn't been as hard sure no i mean i think um i i really don't see a whole lot of value in um I don't know, trying to play like Olympics or something like that with like, yeah. ev everybody has it hard. Um, everybody yeah. has different obstacles that they face in their transition. And, you know, one <clears throat> sometimes might be a little bit more intense than others, but um, certainly not any less hard. Um, everybody has their own ways of dealing with things. So, But yeah, it's cool. So um, very good. I think we have a very good understanding of... Um, you know, your perspective of transition and stuff and kind of where you've come from and stuff like that. Um, are there any other big projects or any other things that you're working on right now? Um, as I do YouTube videos. Um, I'm currently doing a ORAS Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire cage lock with a very close friend of mine. Uh, you can find that in my YouTube channel. That's the big project I'm working on right now. Nice. Um, I have... Uh, I'm also in the process of starting a podcast. I also said I was going to start this podcast like last year. Yeah. I still haven't gotten around to it. So we'll see. I really want to start it, but it, it's hard. Like, I commend you for doing this. It's hard. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've kind of slacked a little bit. I know I'm not doing so many of, more of the news episodes anymore, but, um, you know, I am trying to make a point to continue these Friendly Fridays. Yeah. I think it's really important. Um, and I also think a lot of the work that we're doing with the Trans Resource Curation Project is going to really help out a lot, too. So that's exciting. I think that's a really cool project that you're working on. I think it's going to be good. Yeah, no, my friend Ashley and I, um, she actually came up with the idea and I've helped put a lot of it together as far as like structure and stuff like that goes. Mm -hmm. um, so we make a really great team. Um, she's a really great person and I, I value her so much. She's one of my closest friends. That's um, awesome. Yeah, no, I'm really excited. Oh, stuff like that. Yeah, we've got so much stuff in the pipelines. Like I um, teased this out a little bit um, a couple of days ago, but I kind of want to work on something that would that you'd be able to use like an app almost. Mm -hmm. Have you ever used any of those like Level Up Life apps or anything like that? No. So it's it's kind of like a, a an app that would help you track your progress. So you know, like, are you familiar with Duolingo? Yes, I am familiar okay. with Duolingo. So it would be kind of structured a little bit similarly to Duolingo, where it kind of like rewards that center of your brain, where it's like, I want to see that I've, you know, achieved all this stuff. And I want to look back on all of my achievements and stuff like that. I want to be able to do something like that for like helping people remember to take their hormones and oh my God, um, a God said. like doing voice training and watching makeup yeah. tutorials and stuff like that. And like this would all be really, really great info to have um, accessible in, in a good way. But I think a lot of people's um, hangups with, especially voice training, comes from, um, you know, not being able to see that they're making progress. And I think yeah, if we make it easier, then maybe more people will. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> with me, with voice training, training, my gripe is that, like, it's a lot of information to, like, learn and process. So it's like taking a school class and it's hard. And it just like a school class, it feels like kind of hard to give up or kind of easy to give up once you've reached a certain point and you're mm -hmm. starting to feel more comfortable with your voice and not continue. Right. And so I think a resource like that would be extremely helpful. For some I think people. so, too. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely going to be a long, long project. that I'm working. Oh, of course. Um, but I'll, I'll see what I can do to try to get it done. Um, I know that you do a lot of... Um, Pokemon streams and Pokemon content and stuff. Have you, besides the podcast that you want to do, have you thought about exploring outside of um, Pokemon content? Uh, did you play Monster Hunter Rise at all? I didn't. Okay. So with stuff outside of Pokemon for me, like Pokemon is that game that I can like zone out and play any single day of the week and I'm not going to get bored for hours. Whereas like I've tried like... I've streamed things like Destiny 2 and Warframe and Borderlands, which Borderlands is like my second favorite game ever, mm -hmm. by the way. And I get bored really easy when trying to stream and record myself playing those games. And so like 
well, yes, I would love to try to branch out and try to play these other games for like content and like just for overall fun. It's hard. Yeah. It's so hard. It really is. As and especially when you're thinking from like a YouTube or Twitch branding perspective, when you re when you like start reaching out and doing all these um what do they call it? Variety streamer type things. You start mm -hmm. either losing some of your audience because you're not playing the games that they started coming for you for in the first place, or you do it well and you start bringing in this new audience. But like, there is this line drawn for where people are just like, "Oh, I want to see you play this, and I want to see you play this." And right. if you try to play hopscotch with all of that, it gets like really draining. Yeah, I I completely one hundred percent agree with you there. Um. I think a key part, if you're going to try to be a variety streamer, is to very early build a personality and get, get yes. people to come to you for your personality and not for your content or what, for what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because when you look at the like most popular variety streamers of like our time right now, you look at people like Jacksepticeye, um, Markiplier, Crank Gameplays, PewDiePie, all those people and when you see people like making comp <coughs> compilation videos of like their stuff it's not necessarily focused on the game but more so the personality of the person that's right. playing those games exactly yeah 100 percent agree um yeah no i think that's cool that we're on the same page about a lot of that stuff that kind of like validates a lot of the feelings i i don't really feel like i've <laughs> made it as a stream i don't feel like i'm a oh, streamer yeah. necessarily but it's oh, nice to I, know that like i agree like i feel the exact same way yeah yeah right like yeah, yeah. it's so hard to to feel so like you've hard. made it or anything like um I know, I, I'm sorry, I keep bringing her up, but I just love her so much. My friend Ashley, she just started streaming recently, and oh, her first fun. stream, she got like a consistent 30 viewers through the whole stream. That's awesome. For a first stream, yes, it's, an, it's so amazing. amazing. Oh, I was so happy for her, but she's doing really well with it, and she just hit affiliate, so. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. Congrats, Ashley. Congrats, Ashley. Um. Yeah, so I was there anything else maybe you wanted to uh, touch on? Any other interesting topics you wanted to talk about? Um, I, honestly, like, I don't know. Um, I'm not, like, I'm still kind of, like, in that phase where, like, conversations are hard for me because, uh -huh. like, there's a lot that in the back of my mind, yes, I could say, but, like, at the same time, it's, like, those thoughts are also all scattered, so, like, yeah. Yes and no. <laughs> sure. Well, yeah. um, I can kind of lead then if you don't mind talking okay. for a little bit longer. Sure. Um, one thing that really came to my mind recently is that you are now the only guest that has ever been on Trans in the AM um, that has known me from before I started Transition. Yeah, that is true. Okay. I hadn't I hadn't thought about that. That's very true, yeah. 50. I've known you for a little but, bit. I'm sorry yeah. we haven't really had a whole lot of time to hang out and play it's, games together. It's okay. People are busy. It's This whole world is busy, and it's hard. Like, some people, like, make it seem like it's so easy to make plans with people and, yeah. like, that things don't happen sometimes to, like, interrupt those plans, and it's that's not the case. Yeah, shit, I was oh, 30 weird. minutes late for our interview today. <laughs> It's okay. It's honestly okay. Cool. But yeah, no, I just thought that was interesting. I was talking to yeah. my partner um, before I came in here to do the interview with you, and I just had that thought. I was like, oh, yeah, she's going to be really the only person that knows me as somebody else, huh? That's, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, honestly, like, watching you grow into this beautiful woman has been so amazing to watch. Like... Mm -hmm. It, it's been fantastic knowing you through your journey. I'm You're really sweet. You. Oh, Thanks. thank you. It of it course. really has been quite a um, quite tumultuous at times. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I will say though that I really do enjoy uh, doing the injections every week. That's oh, it's so fun. Oh, it's so fun. Thank I, you, um, thank you, Beast Injection them. Enjoyer. I did them for like a year. And 
I recently switched because I ran out of hormones and when I moved to North Carolina, I didn't have insurance. Uh So I am currently with um, that online brand, whatever their stupid name is, um, Bulks. Oh, okay. Yeah, Yeah. I'm using Bulks for right now until I get my insurance stuff figured out and then I think I want to switch back into injection because it was, I am terrified of needles but it's so fun oh god it is so fun isn't it like i get nervous when i'm like about to do it myself uh, and i like don't do it but then i just like this little rush just, of adrenaline yeah right and then like you get the feeling after it's done that it's like ah oh, feels good yeah it's a good yeah. feeling 100 percent. yeah i really enjoy it um we were talking a lot about um different ways to do hrt and stuff like that um are you familiar with patches I am. I've never actually tried patches myself. Mm -hmm. I have never really even talked to anyone who has used patches about their experience either. Interesting. Uh, Maybe I'll try to get somebody who's who's been using patches uh, to come on and talk about their experience. That would be really cool. That would be really cool because I've never like heard of anyone's experiences with them. Most of most of the people I know are always like injections or pills. So it's like Actually, no, now that I think about it, I did have somebody on that does patches. Um, her name's Layla. Okay. And she's really cute. To, she's really cute. I'll have to go back through and watch that one then. <laughs> yeah, she's really cool. I'm sure we talked about it at some point, but um, I'll rewatch the video tonight, um, probably on 1.75 speed. Yeah. And then, like... Uh, I'll just make sure if if we didn't have a conversation about it, I'll bring her on to talk. I'll do like a special episode with her or something. Mm-hmm. That would be That'd really be cool. Yeah, that would be really cool. I'll make a note of that. Thank you for the free content idea. Of course. <laughs> um. Well, I I know I talked to um talked to you a little bit about your Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire run. Mm-hmm. My partner and I were interested in trying a soul lock. Oh, soul links are very fun. Yeah, soul link. Very that's what it is. That's what it is. Hard. They're very hard. God, yeah, I know. We watched that. There was an animated video. I'm not sure if you've seen it. Um, it recently came out. Um, Jaden, is it Jaden? I think so. Yeah. I tried a two person Nuzlocke or whatever. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Oh mm-hmm. God, it is so fun. Um, I'm interested to to try it. I don't think. Uh, I don't think I'll probably pick the right game for it, though. I want things to be hard, you know? Of course. There, it's, that's the part of the thing that I love about Pokemon is there's so many different ways you can play it. And, like, you can play it with other people now. It's not a thing where you have to just play it alone. If you want to do, like, a Nuzlocke, you can do things with other people, like race. Or there's even options not made by Nintendo slash mm-hmm. Pokemon company that you can play that are really fun, too. Whereas, like, back when I was, I don't know, like, 16 and trying to find, like, Pokemon-style games, there was almost nothing. Yeah. Besides, like, two or three different ROM hacks. Yeah. There were a couple ROM hacks when I was, like, 19, I think. I know one of the ones that I played a lot was Pokemon My Ass version. Did you play that? Yes! I oh love my god, that yes! It was so, so good. much fun. It was good it because it changed fun. so much. You know, it made it a unique yeah. experience. Um, yes. Absolutely. And I like ROM hacks that do that, yeah. ROM hacks are very, very fun. Oh, yeah. Have you played the Poke MMO thing? I have... Uh tried it and i got like through the loading screen and that was about it (laughs) i put it down for some reason and forgot to ever pick it back up yeah i've had people recommend it to me uh, recently again and so i've been thinking about trying it again is this something you recommend i mean i had a similar experience with it i um i i got through i actually played a little bit more of it than maybe you did i got through a couple gyms and progressed a little bit through the story it was interesting I liked seeing all the other player characters, um, mm. but I guess life stuff happened. I dropped it. I picked something else up. I think Monster Hunter Rise came out around that time, actually. Probably. And so we started playing that really hardcore. I put like 600 hours into Monster Hunter Rise. Oh, 
Oh my god. <clears throat> I love it. And now all my friends want me to play Monster Hunter Rise with them on Steam, and I'm like, I'm sorry. If I go to Steam, I'm going to lose all of my progress on Switch. I'm going to have to start completely over. Like, sorry. Just either get it on Switch if you want to play with me, or let's play something else. That's the thing that I lo- like. I slightly hate about games nowadays is like, there's a lot of fun games out there that are cross- cross-platform, but then mm-hmm. there's a lot of really other fun games that aren't cross-platform that have the capabilities to be cross-platform. The companies just don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the case here, actually. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But it also might be a little bit unfair for Steam players to be thrown in with Switch players, like, you know, starting off, I don't know, with no gear. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't. Who knows? There's a way to do it. There's a way to do it. Yeah. You Whatever. just put people into lobbies based on their level, like within like above five or below five radius of yeah. their current level. And it's, I it's feel easy. like that. Sorry. Yeah. I feel like all these like matchmaking things are so bad because people like companies try to like prioritize getting a match over whether it's going to be a high skilled match. And we see this a lot with Pokemon Unite recently. Yeah. And... I have. It, I st- I stopped playing Pokemon Unite months ago because I noticed so- stuff like that was starting to go on, and I was just like, "This is just League all over again, just without vo- just without communicating with your players." I'm good. I'll sit out for a little bit. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Still, um, I don't play competitive like I used to. I wanted to get to master rank season one, and I got to like the one below it, I think, and then I stopped. I was like, the whatever. I think I got, I think I got to great class two, and mm-hmm. then I stopped. Yeah, for for my partner and I, it was super easy for us to climb yeah. like really early on when the when the game first came out because we picked um, Snorlax Cinderace top lane. Oh, well. Yeah. And we went Snorlax Cinderace every single game. Yeah. And I swear to God, I played like 80 straight games of Snorlax Cinderace top and then just boosted my way to ultra rank. I, that, it was just, yeah. that was all I needed to do. Snorlax yeah. was just so incredibly OP when the game first came yeah. out. Cinderace was the same way. It was a while before Greninja even got buffed to the similar level. Like, yeah. it was just so easy yeah. though, because I could just sit there and just go, blo- okay, block. Yeah. <clears throat> go That's away. A- yeah. When uh, right before I stopped playing was when Wigglytuff was extremely good, and God. that's who I played. I always played Wigglytuff bottom lane, <laughs> and <laughs> I had to. True. Okay. True. 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 Fucking hate but, that scene though. I swear to God. Yeah. <sighs> it's so annoying, but it's so good. It's yeah. like it was extremely overpowered. Especially when it came to like capturing the dreadnoughts and stuff. Oh, God, you could just right? like sleep the oh. opponent right when it was like about to knock out the dreadnought and steal the kill and run away. <laughs> just dazzling gleam. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's sad. Well, that's good. Um whew. They're adding Trevenant. I heard. I heard they're adding Trevenant. Yeah. As a fellow <laughs> grass type of... enjoyer, how do you uh I know. I don't want to get back into it now that there's a, yeah. another grass option. Yeah. Well, now there's like, almost a grass option for every role. I know. It's it's crazy to think about. Yeah. Grass types are coming up in the world. Oh, no. Grass type they supremacy. Also have, they also have my favorite dragon type now, and that's had me thinking about wanting to play again. Oh, is it Dragonite? I love Dragonite. <laughs> Dragonite's such a goofy good boy. God, Dragonite is so OP in the game. You would love him so much. Oh, geez. Yeah, basically what you do is like... Huh? I kind of figured. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so they gave him Hyper Beam. Oh, of course they did. Why wouldn't they? And they gave him Dragon Dance. That That's awful. And they made Dragon Dance increase the power of Hyper Beam. Shame on... (laughs) Shame on Pokemon Unite for doing that. That is awful. (laughs) How could they disrespect their players like that? Right. Oh, God. It is really tough, though. Seeing Dragonite's ultimate is incredible. He'll just, like, 
fly up in the air and just land, I don't know, halfway across the map. Um, so you can like literally... That. Almost like Gengar's ult, where you can basically just move half the map undetected. Yeah, kind of, but it's not like you don't like go invisible and then you get to move. It's like a you channel for a second, you fly up, and then you come down and land exactly where you were. And it, you oh, can wow. literally use it to go up from bottom lane straight to top lane. That's crazy. Yeah. That's nuts. Ah, oh, the positioning is incredible. Love it so oh, much. Oh, I bet. I bet. <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> um, I've been toying with the idea of identifying as a xenogender. Do you know what a xenogender oh. is? So that's things like um, like Z -Zare. And neo pronouns and stuff. Those right? are neo pronouns, or... yeah. Uh, okay. Xenogender is a little bit different in that it's okay. like you use um, something that's outside of like the gender spectrum to more accurately describe how you feel in relation to your gender. Oh, yeah. I actually haven't heard about this. And, really? Yeah. I am an uneducated person. <laughs> That's very interesting. I'm I'm interested to talk to you about it because most of the people I talk to already have like some opinion about xenogenders one way or the other. I guess okay. I just talk to extremely online people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I've been toying with that idea because it's like it's pretty interesting um, mm -hmm. to think about because it's like maybe i don't necessarily feel like i would be i would identify with like what i would think of when i think a cis woman mm -hmm. you know maybe i wouldn't necessarily want to um essentialize myself to the point where i'm like forcing myself to get surgery to feel like i need to fit into this role you know yeah and so that's kind of led me to like exploring different ways to describe how i feel mm -hmm. and so i think one of the ways that i really identify with would be with uh something like tree gender does that make sense to you oh kind of yeah yeah so like my idea is that i i kind of want to be this person that like provides a really big structure um mm -hmm. for a lot of people that people can come and they can like rest under my shade you know oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. okay okay yeah I, the um verbal picture really helps yeah, it does. It does help kind of like get people to understand it a little yeah. bit better. Yeah. Yeah. It's not necessarily like, I feel like I want to be a tree, so I'm going to go turn into a plant now. <laughs> there's a, there's a show. There's a show. It's, it's American Dad. <laughs> it's American Dad. Mm -hmm. There's an episode where Haley meets these guys and one of them is living his life in a pot and soil and exclaims that he is a tree oh okay <laughs> well it's very it, it's it's um <laughs> seth this is seth meyer whatever his name is mcfarland yeah seth mcfarland so you know it's obviously like yeah sure yeah, yeah. I'm surprised to hear that uh, American Dad is actually phobic against trans or tree gender people. That's ooh, he, ooh. I, <laughs> tree phobic. I see how it is. Letter. I will. I will write them the sternest worded letter they've ever seen. I look forward to reading <laughs> your sentence. <laughs> well, um, how much time do you have? I'm not keeping uh, you too long, am I? No, you're good. Okay. Good. I'm just kind of here floating around. You nice. Know. Yeah. I remember you used to vape. Do you still? I do. Yeah? I'm sorry yeah, if I, I've been yeah. hitting my thing constantly. You feel free, you know. I, oh, I left my, my bed. I use the uh, Acro. Oh. From... Is it uh, nicotine salts? Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Mm-hmm. My partner works at a glass shop, and they sell vape oh, stuff. Fun. Yeah, fun. it is a lot of fun. Well, it's fun when um, when people aren't being belligerent and trying to steal. 
Yeah. But it has it, it's it's a fun it's a fun experience, and um, often they'll sell a lot of these disposable vapes. Have you seen any of those? Oh, so yes, bad for the environment. So bad. They're so bad for the environment. There's a lot of like uncertainty as to like what's actually in them mm -hmm. as well. Like, and like as far as like the amount of contents that's actually inside of those vapes as to what you're actually smoking when you're getting like to the end of it yeah so i try to stay away from those yeah and no i that's a good that's a good uh perspective to have um they're really terrible <laughs> honestly that oh, like no. they've come out with this is a disposable and this is a it's got a charging port on the bottom so you can charge your disposable vape like <laughs> And the people that come in and buy these vapes are the ones that are like, oh, I don't want to do any work with my vape. I just want to hit it and then throw it away when it's done. It's, it's like, so But if you're charging your disposable vape, dude, like you can, you just can juice it up. it up. Just juice it up. It, and especially with the salt nicotine devices, it's so easy. Yeah. To change, just change the coil every now yeah. and then. The I mean, in. like... I've got this one. It's a Vaporesso. I'm not sure if you've ever seen those before, but it's got it's a pod device. Yeah. You know, so it's even easier. You just you literally you you pop pod. it off, yeah, and you, you squirt it. your juice in there, and you pop it. And you're done. That's yeah. It's so it. easy. It's not like back in the days of when vaping first became a thing, when you like everything. Oh was yeah. Like RDA devices are like the best thing in the world. <laughs> you got a drip. <laughs> You gotta drip the juice on and change your cotton three times a day. Oh, it was the worst. Disgusting. Hated it, it. And then you would, even when the mods started coming out and stuff, you would still have those elitists that would sit up at the vape shop and just like with sit their, at the bar with their drip tips. And oh my god, oh god. There was um, I met someone recently, um, when I was at my work after hours having a drink and he had this huge tube mod and like the biggest rda i've ever seen oh my god and it was like the most embarrassing <laughs> and nostalgic thing i've ever seen that's pretty incredible <laughs> oh my god it's crazy to think that some people still do that you know like yeah i haven't that was the first time i'd seen anything like that in like three four years yeah pretty wild pretty wild out there well um i suppose we could go ahead and wrap up we've got a good solid episode here yeah okay do you have any um anything you want to shout out um yeah just uh my youtube channel you can go subscribe there at uh, uh i don't have a url yet um but you can find me on twitter at is bulbabish and all my links are there so you can go do that that'd be really cool Absolutely. And maybe on Twitch. I'm thinking about returning to Twitch soon. So. Oh, nice. Have you been yeah. streaming on YouTube? No, I've only been doing, like, video okay. content. So I haven't actually streamed in, like, two, three months now. Oh, wow. Something like that. And so I'm thinking about doing that again. Sounds nice. like something that could maybe be fun. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, go to my Twitter. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I do want to thank you for coming on. I'm going to leave all your links in the description. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, of course. Well, you know, that's the least I could do, right? Yeah. Um, I would highly encourage you to check out um, our Discord, the TRCP Discord, Ashley's Discord, and my Discord. Um, we're working really hard on it, and if you get in there, I'll make you a content creator so you stand out from everybody else and people can see your content and stuff like that. So. Yeah, sure. Awesome. I've been a lot more active on Discord lately, so that's something I'll definitely do. Oh, good. Yeah, I'll send you an invite once we wrap up here. But Cool. Sounds good. Alrighty. Well, thank you all for coming out to Friendly Friday. Uh, thank you again to all of our patrons, and thank you, Boba Bish, for coming out. Um, oh, if you would, please go ahead and hit those links down below. Check out some of her content, and also hit that like and subscribe button, of course. And as always, mm -hmm. take care, and do your best to stay unique.